Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. All right, thank you for calling me. You're welcome. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got your message. It things are, things are, it feels like things just got worse and worse. Well, um, I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what's happening right now. I mean, pretty okay. much. Okay, so we have a big issue with the whole, you know, him, the poop situation is getting out of hand. Right. Um, I right. recently found that he had smeared it all over the desk. So there's a desk in the kid's room where he sits and, you know, he does his homework and he pretty much just dug in his butt while he stood there and just painted the whole desk, not just one little mark, painted the whole upside, like under the desk, upside down. Like it's, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and left it there. And there's, you know, I have a kid, a two year old who sleeps in that room and could have thought it was anything and, Lord, it's just it's it's that, and not no, only I mean, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty serious um, issue. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it is very yeah, consequences for lots of different reasons. Yeah, right, and and not only that, right after that happened, um, you know, he went to bed that night, and I noticed like maybe a few hours after he went to bed, his light came on in his room. So it came on and it went off really like fast. So I went into the room and he had a he had gotten up and got a naked doll and laid the doll like literally the legs were like straight back and the doll's head was down and he, the doll was naked and I asked him what are you doing and he's like he wanted to lay with me and and that's all he would I could get out of him but the problem with that is I don't know if you know I've caught him like in certain positions like laying down on his bed like literally like humping the, the the bed so i don't know if he's trying to do something with these dolls or something and it's just like a lot do you say doll yeah like doll? a doll like a baby doll like small dolls that children play with correct huh. okay now i'm like I've seen him, you know, like when I, I've noticed this over the past year when he would get out of school and stuff. I've noticed that, you know, we walk past his bed sometimes and he sleeps on the top bunk beds uh, at this point in time. And I would notice like he would be literally under the covers and there would be a rolling motion going on. And I would ask Makai, what are you doing? Like what? You know, so that indicated to me that, you know, it's puberty and like, oh, it's something's happening there. And he's trying to figure out what's going on. And. You know, but when I ask him questions and try to talk to him about this, that's where it turns into the tantrums, the screaming, um, you know, and then it's like, I don't want to talk. And it's, you know, he turns into a, a toddler. He turns into like a four-year-old or a two-year-old. Yeah. Um, what is this? Is this school for, is this school aware of the behavior? I did tell the teacher and they were the ones who told me to, um, you know, to contact the pediatrician and then to, you know, see where it goes. And that's pretty much where we're at right now with it. And the pediatrician gave you my name. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, I just think we need, I, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not really sure how to help you best because, you know, honestly, um, Leon is at a place where he's not, he's not real verbal. He's not real cooperative. He's doing some very intense kind of behaviors. Um, and I'm not sure how I can really do, you know, I can help you think of things to do at home, but that, again, that's not really the something's wrong. I mean, it's almost like he needs something more than an outpatient psychologist. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it's very different from those kids that I would work with because of his special needs as well as the nature of the, of what he's doing. Um, okay. And I was, you know, what I was thinking is that, um, um, I mean, I think they just, the pediatrician just, if, they're, if they knew of all these details, I think they kind of brushed it off. Because that, that's, you know, <laughs> right. it, it, a lot more intense. And, and I was thinking of two directions to go in. One, um, if, any, if there's anybody, is, he's in a special classroom at school. Yes. Uh huh. He is. is true? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, they may be very aware of, um, you know, situations like this that they have been aware of before, and and how that, you know, how 
how they've gotten help to that particular kid. And I have a um, sort of psychological association with SURF where, you know, I can ask a question in terms of referrals, in terms of someone that knows who, who might work with this situation. And, of course, I wouldn't mention your name or anything, or, but, but, you know, mention, I would mention the nature of the problem in the situation and, and see what kind of feedback I get on, on, you know, kind of where you go with this. Okay, I would appreciate it. I'm really not, I'm really not, I, I, just, I don't know what I would do. I mean, he would, he would come in and I probably couldn't really talk with him. This, this, this. I don't know really what I would tell you to do. He's, he's defiant. He, he pretty much says what he wants to do. Right, and then... Um, yeah, he does. He doesn't expect like a consequence afterwards. And even if he does get like in trouble, it seems to not be enough for yeah, him to stop. Be changing behavior or stopping behavior. Right, it, it it doesn't. Nothing I do works. So I'm just trying to figure and out. I, and, I, and I and I wonder, and I'm, I'm concerned that this might be something. And you know, it, I don't want you to be able to live in your home if, if you can't get a handle on this. Uh, it's not you. It's the behavior. Right. I mean, it's, it's, and I think you've already gotten to the end of your rope in many ways in terms of what to do or how to respond to it. Right. I know you're just feeling desperate. Super desperate uh, right now because, I mean, that's, yeah. that's obvious, obviously that's not what I want, but, you know, I have to think about, like I said, the other children yeah, and, to think about too, yeah. yeah, it's in yeah. safety, you know, I, w I would have died if my child would have thought that that was chocolate under that desk and ate it, like, sure. Sure. you know. you a quick question I don't have any kind of like experience you know because I've been dealing with him just just been like me and him pretty much and and my mom so I'm right. I'm 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 I want to know really like would do you think putting him on like is there any type of medication that would help the situation maybe well, calm him right. down No, they they didn't. Now the whole process, like with the pediatrician, he wanted me to contact you guys and go through that whole process and see what you guys thought about it and putting. They didn't want to put him on anything until he was seen by a therapist and you know all that other stuff. So that's. Yeah, my first response is that I don't know that medicate. I mean, sort of tranquilizing him to. <laughs> you know, I don't know that you're gonna stop him from doing what he wants to do. Either behavior. Right, and that's what I was wondering. Yeah, it might calm his mood down or you know, alter his mood, those kinds of things. But the and behaviors would be, will still be there. Probably go through, once you go through a psychiatrist, they use medication. Because I don't know that physicians are very comfortable with psychotropic medications. Okay. Most of them are not comfortable with them unless they're just straightforward antidepressants or, um, you know, ADD medications, things like that. Okay. Um, more complex cases, they usually want you to consult a psychiatrist. I think we just, I just think we need to do a little bit more exploration of, of who out there is a better fit. I just don't think I'm the best fit to, to give you what you need. Okay. I appreciate um, it. So let me do that. Let me put that on this list of things in the morning. See if I can get any feedback from other psychologists. And you touch base with the school. And, um, it's almost like, the, have you ever heard the term behavioral pediatrician? No. That's the kind of person who also deal with this type of thing. Uh, you know, kind of a, they're usually more specialists in their places like the art, the uh, Marcus Autism Center, things like that. Okay. But um, that could be a direction that we, we go in too. Um, but I'll walk alongside you. I'm not, I'm not dumping you. Oh. I feel like I can't help. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I be able to help find some, somebody who can. 
All right. Well, I, I appreciate it. You know, if you can just get back to me, I'll, I'll definitely call the school in the yeah. morning and see if I can find anything out and, you know. Hey, why don't we, why don't we try on such a base by Friday? Friday? Okay. Morning, yeah, that's fine. We can sure. do that. And um, thanks to your patience for me getting back to you. We started off pretty. I actually had a really bad cold. I can hardly talk. <laughs> oh, man. I hope you get better. Yeah, I think I'm doing better now. Good, good, because it was going around really bad. So I hope you get better. Thanks, No problem. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for calling me back, Dr. Davison. You're very welcome. All right, good night. Bye. All right, guys. So as you can hear from my phone call from the uh, therapist, Live phone call. This is what's happening um, with Makai. And like I said, you do you hear that? Did you hear that? He said that he probably won't be able to live with me. And everybody's been telling me that, like, recently this boy will not stop his behavior. And the last thing I want to do is lose one of my kids, especially my oldest son. I don't know. This is very difficult.